Bad Times at the El Royale from 2018, Review and Thoughts. We have reached November, and the first and last week of this month, I will be doing either a classic noir or a neo-noir. The second and third, I will be going to the theater in, for, for something that isn't noir. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I absolutely loved. This video will have some jokes, none at the expense of members of minorities, and I will get into some serious topics. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. This is definitely a movie you want to go into without anyone spoiling anything. If I end up deciding to, to spoil, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so, hold up an index finger so you can mute and skip ahead and you see me lower my index finger. Once I get into the, the thoughts sections after the review itself, which again, I will verbally say when I get there, the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. And the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the site after strikers, and then there's some links to the videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. So yeah, the this movie is rated R, and there is definitely some very good reason for that. Um, it's not that there's like constant violence, but there's a non-zero amount of violent, you know, bits in the in the movie, and yeah, you know, the IMDb Parents Guide lists it as severe, and yeah, I would have to agree. There, um, yeah, it's moderate as far as profanity, alcohol, drugs, and smoking, and frightening and intense scenes. Sex and nudity are only mild. And yeah, I might also swear in this video. I try to only do that for movies where they, movies and shows where they swear. And the. Yes, I have watched this once. I just got done watching it before I hit record on this video. I was interested in it when it came out, but it is very rare these days for me to go watch something at the theater that is not a comic book adaptation. So there's just so many of those, and I make it a point to watch all of those. Yeah, I don't want to burn myself out on the theater-going experience. And, uh, yeah, you know, I've had it on my radar, um, and, and, yeah, it's November, so time for some neo-noir. So, yeah, the, the plot, I'm gonna be quoting IMDb here, 1969, four strangers check in at the El Royale Hotel. The hotel is deserted, staffed by a single desk clerk, and some of the new guests' reasons for being there are less than innocent, and some are not who they appear to be. And that is about what... Yeah, so the this was written and directed by Drew Goddard, and... He was one of the main reasons I was interested in this. You know, I have forgiven him for Lost. I think he did a perfectly fine job on the the, the first Cloverfield. You know, I know some people really hate that movie. I don't blame them. I thought it was fine. I don't think I've watched it more than the one time I watched it in theaters back when it first came out. You know, I had a JJ phase, what can I say? Um, but yeah, I, I think he did fantastic on the... the oh, hold on. Yeah, so many different credits. Yeah. Um, the Cabin in the Woods, which he directed and co-wrote with... Joss Whedon, and, you know, talented man, complete asshole to, to the people that he works with. Um, yeah, the, the, 
That's right. Yeah, this is actually he's he's actually directed this four episodes of The Good Place and the, the Cabin in the Woods. Those are the only things he has directed. So I am approaching having watched everything. So so yeah, I wasn't gonna let this not you know once I saw it was on Disney Plus. Right, and he actually he created he was he was one of the creators of the creator of the Netflix Daredevil show, which is amazing. He wrote an episode he wrote thirty nine episodes of that and wait, yeah, that means he wrote uh yeah. He wrote he did at least some writing for all or what is that the right the creator writing credit, whatever. Um, and he wrote an episode of The Defenders, which I still think people were too hard on. I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as people seem to think it was. And the, let's see. Yeah, so this is very much... There are some some significant plot twists in this movie, so it is of course important how they are handled. I think it is the appropriate amount, and I didn't personally think any of them were bad. I know some people have felt that the, they were, and it is not one of those movies that just falls apart once you learn certain twists. And let's see. Yeah, um, I kind of love this kind of movie, the, this thing of, you know, you genuinely don't know who you can trust and what exactly the, the different, yeah, you know, you're constantly, you're side-eyeing everyone and, and constantly trying to figure out, you know, and it's very much, it's a very carefully assembled cast you know the the everyone who plays a major role in this i suppose i guess this might have been let's see was this the first i i don't know about kaylee spaney uh i know that uh, okay that's right yeah she was in the the second pacific rim movie i haven't watched either of them and a short and then she did this other than her, everyone is like an established name. You know, they're not all equally well respected. Um, Chris Hemsworth is not necessarily someone that you know. I I think he has shown a significant amount of talent, but a lot of people look at him and they just say, "Oh, Thor." He's you know also neglecting that he actually does pretty good acting in, in those movies. He's he's one of the, the strongest, anyway, str one of the strongest Avengers in more ways than one. But, yeah, it's very much, you know, some, some movies, they, they kind of, some, some movies that have a, a somewhat, a, something of an idea like this of, you know, who can you trust, some of them make the mix mistake of casting a huge name, or may, maybe couple of huge names and then just having these you know actors that people don't really know and sometimes sometimes that works really well sometimes that means that the no names can really surprise you but sometimes it just kinda means that people are like well I mean the no names are not gonna be the the you know the, the masterminds behind this whole thing so yeah I mean I guess they're there but I'm, I'm not going to suspect them, but with this one, yeah, like, every single major role, other than Kaylee Spaney's, uh, which I don't think I want to give away exactly what she plays. Right, and, and I guess, um, let's see, the, um, I'm not sure I know Lou, Louis Pullman. Yeah, he had, he had been in a, in several things at least before this. It might be mostly that you know his his father is Bill Pullman, but you know 
yeah, I, I really appreciate that that we really don't know exactly who, like, it's, this is not a movie where it's like, okay, this is the protagonist, and, you know, we're, we're following them, and, and they're the, the, you know, that can work really well for some movies. This is very much an ensemble cast, and you're, you're, like, with everyone, there's at least one early thing that they either say or do, where you find yourself thinking, what was, what was that about? Are they, are they hiding something, you know, and I'm not going to give away before I get into the thought sections who is hiding something, but they really did phenomenal on that. Just just giving them the, these little small things that you immediately, you know, clock as, as okay, that's definitely, there's something there. And, you know, and, and, you know, yeah, it's, you never, like, later in the movie, it's like, oh, that was just, you know, like, that was, that was nothing, that was random, or, or something, there's always, all of it, there is some explanation for, you know, the, the, you later come to realize it, you know, and, yeah, um, that, yeah, so, um, according to Wikipedia, um, yeah, Drew Goddard, uh, this is a direct quote. Gumbo is the perfect way to describe it. I love crime fiction, I love film noir, I love big ensemble movies, I love 60s music. So much of this movie is about my love for the music of the 1960s, wanting to celebrate the artistic revolution that was happening. I take all of those things, throw them in the, into the gumbo pot, spice it up with a little of my own stuff, and out comes you know, this movie. Uh, this is also, the, the movie somewhat reminds me of other neo-noir, like The Perfect Getaway, No Good Deed. No, this is not the first neo-noir that I watched that does not have Mila Jovovich in the cast. Thank you very much. And, let's see, the, yeah, so some, some critic quotes. Uh, let's see. With the subtle links to real life events and the complete realism, it demonstrates the complexity which placed each character is presented as an egg, bland and boring on the outside, but on the inside, an array of genetic DNA with strands copious of producing many beings. The plot portrays its deep and mysterious ways by diverging each story and blending them to create a masterpiece. For wind of tape to be nothing to watch her, what is contained by is a supernova ready to be unleashed. Uh, and then just, okay, I, I try not to make this too big a part of my reviews, but I just gotta point out, one person, this was almost their entire review, they, they wrote, this was not what I expected. Since you don't tell us what you expected or why, this is a useless review. Like, is it the cast? Is it the director? Is it the genre? Is it the release date? What gave you the, is it the trailer? What gave you these expectations? Why was it not what you expect? It's like it's worse than nothing. It's not just like I hate it. I hate when people write nothing reviews like that. And I guess I'll just very briefly say, yes, I've seen some people say about this. You know, tell you what, if hypothetically, I doubt it, but if hypothetically the the person who wrote that, you know, happens to watch this video, I'm not saying that you're like a terrible person I'm just saying put more effort in or don't write anything at all just rate it you know if you if you don't have anything to say about a movie that you watched I I don't know if someone is out there like forcing people to write nothing reviews pointless reviews that don't tell you anything that just waste people's time clog up the the review sections of, of websites so that good reviews are, you know, so so buried that people end up not being able to read them. Anyway, the the and yeah, you know, I did just give constructive criticism of it. I've seen some reviews of this where people don't seem to really appreciate. Like, you don't have to like it. It's fine if you don't like it, but some people seem to not appreciate it at all. It is extremely well constructed, very carefully constructed, 
and and some people were like, eh, it was kind of long, I didn't like it, and give it a low rating. Like, at least point out, in case your review is the only that someone reads, write something that actually get because I'll, t I'll talk about it in detail when I get into the spoilers, but a lot of thought went into this. It is, it is very... It's, it's much more complex than, like, stuff that actually gets more popular. And I'm not one of those people who say, oh, you know, no movie is good today. There's a lot of great movies today, but a lot of people just say, oh, you know, it kind of reminds me of a different movie or you know, a different director or something, so I don't like it. Instead of saying, well, I mean, you know, some, some people say, oh, this reminded me of Quentin Tarantino. I agree, there's definitely some Quentin Tarantino going on here. You know what's going on in Quentin Tarantino movies? A lot of other movies. Like, he he takes inspiration from a lot. And I honestly, I, I really, I take issue with anyone who says, oh, this is just Quentin Tarantino. Not that that's, like, some... You know, again, talented guy, real asshole to some of the people he's worked with. But there's, yeah, you know, this this movie is not just Quentin Tarantino and, and nothing else. Like, there's, you know, let's see, and, um, yeah, um, some, uh, let's see, yes, yeah, so, but but yeah, you know, and and it's also it's it's so uh, it's so cinematic. Like there's too many there's too many popcorn movies today, and I'm not sure I would necessarily call this a popcorn movie, even even high class popcorn movie. But there's a lot of popcorn movies today that don't really have a sense of the cinematic, you know. And you know, again, I watch a lot of comic book adaptations, and I love almost everything MCU, but. I, I wish that they would take, you know, bigger swings sometimes cinematically. And this is very much a movie that is actually, you know, trying to, to do something interesting. So, a direct quote. I heard a few people complain the plot doesn't move fast enough because they keep showing the same scene over and over again, just from different perspectives. I noticed that and I see that it's a big flaw of the movie, but it didn't really distract me or ruin my enjoyment in any way. I mean, I would say the movie is more of a character study than about plot. Like, I, I think people are too obsessed with plot. Some stories are not about plot; they're about other things. You know, there's there's themes and character exploration here that greatly outweighs. Like, there's some movies that are all about plot, and they kind of forget to be. A, they they don't really ex explore character. And I definitely disagree that it's like a big flaw. And also, like, I read that quote before I watched the movie. I thought it was going to be way bigger. It's really not that big a part of the movie. Let's see. And, yeah, one one person points out, you know, the in, in some ways it's more Jean-Luc Godard than Tarantino. You know, I think I'll actually just, instead of quoting a bunch from this review, I'm going to, real quick, there. I'm, I'm linking it in the description box so you can read for yourself. And, let's see, yeah, one person says it's somewhat like if Wes Anderson and the, the Coen brother styles, you know, met and... Let's see, yeah, one, one person says, you know, think Rear Window, Pulp Fiction, Psycho, and The Hateful Eight all in a blender. And, yeah, very true. And, yeah, so the opening of the film does a really great job providing a hook. Like, there's something, I don't think I want to give away exactly what, but there's something that you see and you're like okay I got to know more about that and yeah the right I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending the ending fits what came before and there's a there's a very uh, there's a sense of like uh, it I found it to be very very satisfying as an 
as a conclusion to this, which is another thing. There's too many movies today that don't know how to how to close uh, a narrative, and yeah, I I quite liked the ending, and the, let's see. That brings us to the character. So, yeah, this is very much one of these, uh, you know, you're not necessarily going to like all the characters. Personally, I would say they're all interesting. You know, there, there's that thing of, you know, are, are the characters likable or are they interesting assholes? And I would definitely say I... I I found everyone here interesting. I will acknowledge some people did not feel that way. And I would definitely say, you know, like, if you're watching this and you find yourself really not caring about characters, not liking, you're not necessarily supposed to like them, but if you don't care about what happens to them, yeah, it, it might not really be for you. And that's fine. That's, you know, not, not every great movie is for every viewer of, of great movies. Now, the... Yeah, so... Jeff Bridges plays Father Flynn. And there is this, like... Yeah, so I don't, I don't want to spoil anything. I'll just say, you know... I've I've always been impressed by by Jeff Bridges. I you know I haven't come anywhere close to watching all of the the movies he's been in, but yeah, you know, I've I've always been been really happy with his performances and yeah, this is this is yet another really solid one and and it's one of those things where yeah, like you know, if you've watched enough of his movies, yeah, you know, he can do this, like, charming, you know, maybe slightly quirky guy, but he can also play, like, real bastards. So, yeah, you know, the fact that he's in this does not mean, oh, you know, he's definitely gonna be, you know, playing someone really appealing. Uh, yeah, Cynthia Arrivo plays Darlene Sweet, and yeah, she's someone that I really noticed in the... holy crap, that's... wow, I thought she had been in more things... anyway, Widows, you know, which in general is also a movie with a great cast. She was one of the few that I hadn't seen in anything else. And, yeah, she really stood out as incredibly, you know, incredibly talented. I forgive her for Pinocchio. I don't think very many, you know, that, that movie didn't make anybody look super good. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see her in, in more. These are the only three things I've seen her in. I hope her career goes on for for a long time. Yeah, so this was actually this was only her second movie. So she was she was not established as an an actor. Forgot that when I m mentioned, but yeah. Um you know, you you get this sense that she like Darlene is trying. You know, she's she's trying to make things work. And I don't really want to give away exactly if things are going well or, or not, but yeah, uh, Dakota Johnson, Johnson. Hmm. I don't think I want to give her name away, at least not just yet. The the yeah, she makes she makes an entrance. Let's go with that. And yeah, just you know, I've, I I I believe this is the first thing I I see her in. You know, I I 
forgive her for, you know, someone had to play Anastasia Steele. And I hear, you know, like, it makes it a lot easier that, like, she apparently didn't, you know, she took it to, to, to for, for career boost. You know, it wasn't that she thought, oh, this is the best thing ever, you know. And, and to be clear, I'm not saying, there's nothing wrong, you know. I haven't read the books, I haven't watched the movies. As far as I understand, they're basically porn for women. I have no problem with porn for women. The, you know, it's the fact that it is this really toxic version of uh, a romance. You know, and, and you know, I, th I think, honestly, I think the fact that bothers me the most is I've heard from people who are part of the BDSM community that it really misrepresented them and could lead to, to people, you know, um, American media, ever since BDSM, you know, became a thing, American media has been demonizing it, and... The fact that, you know, so so let's see, the last of the Fifty Shades, uh, that's right, yeah, 2018. In the year 2018, still demonizing BDSM. Like, if you don't like it, don't do it. It's that simple. Don't prevent other people from something that makes them feel good just because you don't like it. You know, I, I forget who said it, but someone from the BDSM community pointed out there's actually way more consent involved in BDSM than in vanilla sex. Which actually, I my theory is that's what's bothering the conservative Christians. They can't handle that sex is consensual. That it's not just a man raping a woman that he may have married. But yeah, the the... I've been wanting to see Dakota Johnson in, in something to to you know not think of her as oh she's that fifty shades person you know but yeah the the let's see and and yeah John Ham he basically plays a salesman which I hear is kind of his I think this is the is this the first thing I no I feel like there's at least one other thing I've seen him in but yeah um, I hear that he you know I am aware that he plays a salesman on the the oh that's right yeah he's I've, yeah I've seen him in something else um, but yeah he like on the on that show um, Mad Men like Don, Don Draper you know salesman. And apparently he does a bunch of ads, uh, you know, so so I, I only know this because of Maggie Mayfish, the, the YouTuber. But, yeah, it's, you know, I, I, it is possible that he was, that he, he took this role as a, you know, so that people would specifically, you know, I'm not going to give away whether he turns out to be more than a salesman or something other than a salesman, but, you know, he, he, the moment that he he meets some of the other characters, like he's immediately going right into talking about selling stuff, and you know, here's you know, here's here's the the business card, and you know, you look like you need a vacuum cleaner. Just like immediately, you know, you you get a sense of this. Yeah, he's 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 fun. There's a lot of. Uh, you know, a lot of energy and passion there. And, yeah, uh, Lewis Pullman plays Miles, and he works at the El Royale, and, yeah, like, there's, there's clearly something there, because he doesn't seem, like, you know, um, the the John Ham character notes almost immediately we got to work on your sales pitch and you're immediately wondering why is the what you know how is his sales pitch so bad if he works there you know and yeah just 
you know, I'd, I'd like to see Lewis Pullman in, in more stuff, because I, I really felt he did a, a really, really impressive job here. And, yeah, so the, the dialogue, you know, ev everything in the movie is very carefully crafted to fit with 1969. You know, the hotel feels like, you know, the, the decor and such. It feels like it's, it's 1969, you know. There's, there's a jukebox, and it certainly sees some use. And, you know, this is very much like, like Quentin Tarantino movies. You know, you have a lot of music that's clearly very carefully selected for specific scenes. You know, sometimes it underscores the scene, sometimes it contrasts it, but, yeah, great choices of, of music. The, the, and, and yeah, you know, costumes, the, the, yeah, just everything really feels like it belongs in 1969. And the, the, the dialogue, like, it really captures how people spoke back then. And there's just, there's some really, really clever lines there's, you know, several several lines where you hear it, and it's like, okay, I know what that character meant by la by that, but I can't help but notice that that could also mean this completely other thing, and I feel like the movie wanted me to notice that. And yeah, it's, I won't give away if that's always the case, but there were definitely some some situations here. Where a you know very specific line later in the movie was revealed to be about something completely different than the the immediate you know this is this is a movie you know Drew Drew Goddard Drew Goddard did not start writing like yesterday he's been writing for a while and he understands that words dialogue really means it it can it doesn't always sometimes it's filler. But under certain circumstances, it can really mean something. You can you can plant ideas in the audience's head with dialogue, and he does fantastic on on that here. And you know, yeah, some of the the themes are like actually brought up in dialogue. Some is even like actually discussed by people. Like some of the characters will point out, you know, the, the, I don't know if I want to give away exactly what the, the theme is. I, I'll talk about it in the spoiler section. But, but yeah, the, just fantastically written and delivered dialogue. And, you know, I wouldn't quite say it's like Tarantino, but some of it definitely does head in that direction. The cinematography is fantastic. The this is yeah, I, I already mentioned this this is very this feels like cinema. This is not just, you know, oh I don't know, they they you know slapped something together. The the cinematographer is Seamus McGarvey. And let's see, yeah, yeah. Uh, he also DP'd 2016's Nocturnal Animals. I haven't watched that one. I would like to. I do hear that it's incredibly, you know, well shot. Um, let's see. He shot... Okay, I, I am not familiar with very much of what he has shot but he did yeah high fidelity which also has quite good cinematography and enigma from 2001 sahara from 2005 oh that's right yeah the first avengers movie was also him yeah you know some some really excellent this is this is the most cinematic of the films I've just mentioned and it is also edited in a very cinematic way. Some some scenes are edited to fit exactly like the the 
uh, what's the word like the um, the beats of music and and such. The editing was handled by Lisa Lasek, who also edited *The Cabin in the Woods*. So, you know, they they worked together on both of these films. And let's see, she edited the first two Avengers movies. Huh, she edited an episode. She edited the pilot for Blade the series. Uh, yeah, yeah, she edited Serenity, which, you know, the, the, um, yeah, the movie based on the, uh, Firefly. And, yeah, and she edited five episodes of Firefly, she edited some Buffy, so yeah, you know, she she's worked with Joss Whedon on multiple occasions, and the, right, and the, yeah, the music is by Michael Giacchino, and yeah, fantastic, as his scores tend to be. And that brings us to, yeah, so some of, yes, yeah, some of this was shot in a studio, but there is also some, like, actual uh, physical location shooting, and they made the right choice. It was very much, it really adds to it. The budget was 32 million and the box office was 31.9 million, so this was very much a box office failure. I really hope that Drew Goddard gets to direct again. I really feel like he has a knack for it. Uh, let's see, I, I doubt that it'll kill his writing career because he's so sufficiently proven himself with others, but. You know, some studios, if if one of your two movies does not do well, I forget was. Let's see, real real quick. I feel like I heard that Cabin in the Woods was a hit. Okay, so off a budget of thirty million, it made sixty six and a half. That was twenty eleven. Um, let's see. Was it, um, let's see, I, it's supposed to say it's somewhere around here. Um, let's see. Nah, I'm not really seeing if it was considered a hit or, or not. Anyway. So the yeah the sound design is is quite good you you get a real strong sense of individual like actions and locations based on the the sounds and the yeah so the movie in total is 1 hour blech. Holy crap, I may not have gotten, I did not get enough sleep last night. Two hours and 16 minutes without end credits and two hours and 23 minutes with. And there's no post credit scene or something like that. Um, you know, there's some great music over the end credits. But other than that, yeah, it's it's fine to, to stop watching once they they start rolling. And I would probably say, yeah, give it give it about half an hour, and and you if if half an hour in if you don't care about any of the characters or the the thing that was set up in the opening, yeah, uh, I'm not sure the movie's really gonna hugely turn it around for you. Uh, so, you know, if you're watching it by yourself or the people you're watching it with are also not interested, you can, you know, you, you may want to stop watching and, and find something else to watch. It is a bit of a slow burn. I was never bored, but I do... It is the kind of thing where 
this is a very ambitious second movie to direct. You know, I, I don't think that he fumbled it, but I do think that there are, you could trim maybe 10 minutes out of this, and I think it would be tighter without losing the, the depth. But the, yeah, you know, it is very much, like, you can tell that Drew Goddard really loves making this and really, like, loves the, the genres that he's tackling and such, and that's great. That's not a bad thing. But I, I think it would have been good, you know, maybe, yeah. In, in editing, and it's possible there already was a lot of tightening, but just a tiny bit more would have been would have been really great. I, I would definitely say, you know, if you like the the if if you like Quentin Tarantino's movies, you will probably find at least parts of this very appealing from from that now the the best elements are the 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 themes the cast the the cinematic feel of it and uh, yeah the the worst aspect is definitely that it is a tad too long but that's really not i i don't think it's a big problem uh, at at all I, I definitely felt like it was well worth my time, and I'm almost definitely going to be watching this again. Something I saw others criticize, some have felt that this was style over substance. I really hate to sound arrogant. Because I don't like when people realize that I am arrogant. Okay. I'm probably at least a little arrogant. If you th really felt like there was no, there was very little substance in this movie, I I think you may have missed the substance. And uh, yeah, the thing I was most worried about that it was that it would not live up to its potential, and it did. And yeah, the, the you know thing I was most looking forward to was yeah, it's a it's a tie between the cast and Andrew Goddard, and with both, yeah, very very impressed. The trailer does give at least a little too much away, but I you know I I waited to watch it until after watching the movie. I was impressed that they did manage to avoid a lot of the things that I had you know as I was watching it, I was thinking oh that was probably in the trailer. A lot of it actually wasn't, but it definitely, I would not recommend watching the trailer before. Or at the very least, not watching the entire trailer before watching. I suppose, let's see, I guess if you... Uh, hmm. I... Let's see, I would, I would recommend not watching the entire trailer maybe like watch the first minute of the the two minute nine second trailer and then don't watch any further but yeah if you have already watched the trailer I would say it does a, a pretty good job giving you an idea of what the movie is like and the the cover and poster art do not do not give too much away and I would say they're worth looking up on IMDB so on Rotten Tomatoes this has a 75 percent from critics which makes it certified fresh and also 75 percent from audiences this is one of those cases where they actually did go together so of the 260 critic reviews 194 are fresh. The average score is 6.70 out of 10. There are more than 5,000 audience ratings, and the average is 3.7 out of 5. The consensus, smart, stylish, and packed with solid performances, bad times at the El Royale delivers pure popcorn fun with a salty tang of social subtext.
that's also, honestly, I think some of the people who didn't like it and who said, oh, there's no substance here, I think they just didn't like that, like, I, th I think it was, it was conservatives who watched it and were, like, really offended that, like, you know, the movie calls out racism and sexism, misogyny, so, yeah, and, and instead of using the words, like, big boys, they just smash their keyboard and type out something nonsensical that doesn't even necessarily describe the movie at all. Instead of just saying, you know, this is very left-leaning and I don't like that. Although some, you know, some of them do admit that. So on Metacritic, this has a 60 out of 100 from critics, mixed or average, 53% positive, 37% mixed, 9% negative. And let's see. Okay, one of the negative ones said it was self-indulgent. And thoughts, yeah, thought it, it goes on for too long and yeah the the second person also yeah one one person said it was ponderous and yeah um one per yeah this is a pretty decent quote it's an unfortunately apt demonstration of what can befall a clever filmmaker who gets too clever that is how some people feel. I, I disagree, but that is definitely a perfectly... I, I, I can understand where they're coming from, and that is a review that actually makes sense. And... Let's see... The, hmm. the direction is similarly yearning, practically begging for admiration. Yeah, I, I suppose I can I can see what they mean. Users on, on Metacritic actually liked it better than critics. It has a 7.2 out of 10, generally favorable. 72% positive, 24% mixed, and 4% negative. Now, the... Let's see, negative, yeah, one, one person just says, it's, you know, it's too similar to Quentin Tarantino. And, yeah, and they were also, they took issue with something that I think I might talk about in the, sp yes, I will, I will talk about in the, in the spoiler section. And, let's see. Um. Hmm. Yeah, the the yeah, one person thought it was too violent, which, you know, I can I can definitely respect that point of view. I I that is yeah. And let's see one yeah, one person says it tries hard to be hip and suspenseful but fails at both. And Wow, one person felt that you should cut 50 minutes out. But then the, this person also says, put original music in place of oldies, and you have a real good film. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. And... Let's see... And yeah, one one person says that the they did actually feel the first hour and a half was interesting, and it was what came after that that they felt failed. Now, um, yes, on IMDb it has a seven point one out of ten based on one hundred and sixty thousand ratings. 33.5% uh, uh, gave it 7, 26.1 gave it 8, 16.3 gave it 6, 8.8 .8 gave it 9, 5.5 5 gave it 5, 5.3 gave it 10, 2.0 gave it 4, 
1.0 gave it 3, 0 0.9 gave it 1, 0 0.6 gave it 2. So, yeah, a lot of the people, a huge chunk of the people who watched this and, and rated it on IMDb did really, really like it. There are 1,031 reviews, or if you hide spoilers, 884. I read the top voted 100 of the spoiler free ones. So two people gave it a 1 out of 10, 6 gave it 2, 5 gave it 3, 4 gave it 4, 8 gave it 5, 17 gave it 6, 2, 2 gave it 7, 22 gave it 8, 17 gave it 9, and 18 gave it 10. So by far the m most popular user reviews on IMDb are the ones that really loved the movie. So it is very much, a, you know, it did find its audience. It is not a very special effects heavy movie, but what there is is quite convincing. It definitely appeared to me that they very little of it was like CG or that kind of thing. It tended to be like practical effects. The effects are not showy. And I want to talk about specifics of effects, but it would give spoilers, so I will do that in the spoiler section. There are some very impressive stunts, and the it, it adds a sense of physicality that can really, you know, it's, it's the kind of story that benefits... I'm not, I'm not saying every single thing like this has to have this, but this one definitely benefits from this sense that it's not like just people talking. You know, a chunk of the movie is that. I'm not going to give away how much. But there is, like, danger. And the, the stunts and violence really help underline that. You know, you'll, you never quite know when something is going to turn violent. And, yeah, um, I rate this 8 Neo-Noir Mysteries out of 10. And, yeah, um, I hope that this is a movie that, that will get, you know, it, like, critics liked it, so it's not so much that, but I, some of the... Some of the negative reviews. I, I hope that some of these people will look back on it later and, you know, better appreciate. But I think that might be about what I have that is not spoiler. Yeah, so the... let's see... We are into the spoiler section, so from here on out, there will be spoilers for everything. And I'm not even sure the video is going to make, the rest of this video might not make that much sense if you haven't watched the, the movie anyway. So, yeah. Um, starting with the first section, which is entitled, Notes Taken While Watching. So... Before I dive into that, you know, yeah, some of this is an ana analysis, some of it is MST3K riff tracks and other jokes. This section will mostly be in chronological order. And yes, the. There we go. So, yeah, um, you know, the. the I really love the entire opening, the, the, you know, at first it's actually just one really long take, and for, like, the entire opening, it is this one shot that doesn't, like, this one medium shot, which I can appreciate, you know, I, I get why some felt, you know, it's, it's, you know, begging for, you know, yeah, um, begging to be appreciated. You know, it's the kind of thing where either you're, 
okay with that or you're you're not. And I can absolutely respect not being, you know, but yeah, it's about let's see, it is it's it's slightly over three minutes. It's almost three and a half minutes the the opening of this this one long shot. And at first it's one take. Then we also get a montage and it's cut to the music. And yeah, we see, you know, the the hiding under the the floorboards and just yeah like it's the kind of thing where you know a lot of the audience is going to be like i i can't wait for someone to to dig that back up and i i seriously respect that it actually you know it it takes a while before they get to to digging digging it up but the first time we see someone digging for it is actually fairly early. It's like maybe half an hour in that we see, I guess I'll be calling him Doc, since that's apparent. That those are his initials, D-O-K, the, the Father Flynn, you know. And, yeah, you know, there's a knock at the door, and, you know, the guy gets the gun ready, which also, you know, the the moment that we see the gun, we're like, okay, this is, you know, there's there's a sense of danger that we, you know, we can we can appreciate. This is, yeah, there's there is a very real threat here, and yeah, you know, he he checks and he apparently recognizes the person, so he opens the door and then he's shot. Um, I think it's it's like the moment that he turns his back on the on the guy, he gets shot. So that wasn't a what ah, what's the word? That that's not a you know oh the the police caught up to him. That's a betrayal. You know he was he was betrayed by one of the people he was working with. So you know we already have this thing of you know, are people trustworthy? You know, is the... It, there, there are several scenes where someone knocks on a door and the person inside of the room and it's actually, yeah, I guess I guess each time it is one of the hotel rooms you know, the the they're at the the, yeah, the person inside the room does recognize, has met the person on the outside, but they're not entirely sure if they trust them, or, you know, perhaps even, you know, yeah, I, it, with, in the case of, of Emily, she does not want uh, John Hamm in there, but yeah, I, I don't think it's accidental that there is this ongoing you know and and yeah the ultimately doc and darlene don't end up shooting each other but there is there are scenes where they threaten to to hurt one another and and she does bash him with the with the bottle emily does end up shooting john ham you know, and here in the the first scene, one of the, you know, yeah. Later we find out there there were robbers. One of the robbers shoots the other robber, and it is this thing of, yeah, just even the the fact that they know each other, and maybe even trust each other doesn't mean that one of them is not going to murder the other. You know, he shot him in the back. He did the, the he left him no chance you know it wasn't like a quick draw or or something you know he didn't he didn't trick him into to you know like he yeah he he doesn't force him to you know someone once said there are two kinds of men in this world those who have the gun and those who dig he could have, you know, carried that out, but no, he just he just shoots him, you know, just like that. 
And yeah, so the you know we we cut to ten years later, and immediately bring up this idea of you know the fact that the 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 hotel is by this the the state line, and the the when we first see you know um, Doc, he. You know, he he plays it off as oh, you know, I was just wondering, you know, oh, it's 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 the it's the state line, and that's kind of fun. But you know, it is later revealed he was confused. He he was, you know, struggling. The the ah, let's see. So, if I understand correctly, it's Alzheimer's that he that he apparently has. You know, and. When we first just see him standing there and and like, you know, not, you know, you can tell there's something a little off, and you're you're wondering, you know, is he like, is he trying to steal himself for doing something bad, or you know, what what exactly is is going on there? And let's see the, um, yeah the. The different denominations comes up very, very quickly. You know, the the Doc and John Ham talk, and the I, I think it's it's John Ham who mentions, you know, okay, so we're you know, we're not the same denomination, but you know, and and it's pointed out. I, I really appreciate this because, like, I, I have to admit, when I was a child, I thought, oh, Christianity, that's just one thing, you know, one bad thing. Most of, you know, it, it tends to be a bad thing, but it is, there are, there are different strands of, of how bad it is. Not all of them are equally misogynistic. They're all misogynistic, but not equally. And this film, you know, points out, you know, that the, it's brought up that, you know, I, I forget who one of one of the characters does say something like you know we we believe in the same god and that's good enough but it is still pointed out you know it, it characters are are pointing out that that they're from different denominations and there's this yeah you know they are in conflict the the and the the characters are basically acting like I mean okay so we got to you know, let's still try to get along because we all do have to stay at the same hotel together. You know, no, no holy war here. You know, so so yeah, I quite appreciate that because a lot of Christians act like, oh, you know, it's just you know, the the um, Billy V even says it later. You know, oh, you ch you choose good or bad. You know, but that's you know, there e even if you say good means Christianity, which you know. There's a lot of other religions, but even if you say to be good, you have to be a Christian. Well, which denomination, though? You know, and and some people from different denominations are extremely judgmental of others, as if a huge chunk of the people don't just have the same faith as their parents. You know, so it's not like oh, you know, I I looked through all the different ones and I picked the right one. How did you not pick this one? Do you not agree that it is the more right one? And yeah, um, very you know, it's it's fun with with John Hamm, you know, trying to to sell, and I really appreciate that. Like later, yeah, you know, he turns out to be an undercover FBI agent, and it is like, yeah, that's a really great cover because he's chatty enough that no one thinks, oh, that guy's hiding something. But he's also annoying enough that no one really wants to talk to him. Like, you know, and and it's in a way, you know, he's like a door-to-door a -door salesman kind of, kind of thing. Those people are annoying, you know, just it's, it's really that simple. So it's a really good cover, and it also explains why he has this heavy, you know, case, which he also, he keeps saying, you know, each time someone new enters the room, those are mine. I'd like to. I'd like for you to not touch it. 
And yeah, if he's a salesman, it's like, you know, if if I don't have this, you know, vacuum cleaner tomorrow, when I go out and, and you know, sell some more, I'm going to be in trouble because I can't show off the merchandise, you know. But as we come to realize, no, that was a cover. He was hiding the fact that there are these, what's the word? Like he... The, the, what are they called? It's, it's, um, like, yeah, it's stuff for, for, you know, it's the, what he uses to open the phone to find bugs and such. And, let's see, yeah, and he, he pushes Darlene verbally, you know, uses derogatory language and, you know, he's like, oh, you're black, you must be in the hospitality business, you know. And, and you know, he, he says, of course, you know, she wants to be, she wants more distance between herself and the, the priest. She's living in sin, you know, she's not married. And it's like this thing of, like, I can at least understand if you're looking at, like, a single parent and saying, you know, kids need two parents. Unless, of course, you then go on to say, and those parents need to be, you know, one man, one woman. They're, they should both be straight. Nope. Studies show it is more important for the parents to be loving than for them to be a heterosexual couple. But a single parent, you know, that I, I don't blame anyone who's struggling to find a good partner to raise children with. But I can appreciate that you know, ideally, you know, you would want to have two parents for a child. But there's no indication that she has a child. Why is it any of your fucking business whether or not she's married? But that's, you know, people back then, they, they could not stop t just getting in other people's business. You know, the, the you know, he's he's taking issue with the fact that she's got a job that she doesn't you know yeah she doesn't get married and and just accept that a man is going to be running her life you know but but yeah i i quite appreciated that element in the film and i like that miles almost immediately says this hotel is no place for a priest because that does a couple of things there's the obvious thing of miles acknowledges that some bad stuff happens at this hotel another is you know if this is no place for a priest and he's here and he looks like a priest does that mean that he's only pretending to be a priest, which does turn out to be the case, as, as well as the first thing? Then we have the thing of, like, Miles is the first person to, to say a priest shouldn't be here. This could help imply that maybe he needs a priest. You know, because the others are like, you know, whatever. Like, it's not that no one, ev everyone cares about Christianity in this film. Which, you know, very accurate to the, the period. And the movie is examining, is Christianity automatically good? And the, the you know, there's, there's that bit about, you know, people don't ask when, you know, when they see a priest, they just let him do whatever. And that's, sadly, you know, that's that's a part of how the Catholic Church were able to protect pedophile priests for, you know, an, an absurdly long amount of time. And, yeah, you know, of, of, the, of the various characters in, in this film, Miles is the one who most feels the need to confess. You know, so, yeah, when he sees a priest, it's almost like, you know, someone's walking in on him with his pants down or something. He's like, no, no, not here, not here. It kind of thing, you know, he's, it's not that he doesn't want 
to go to a priest. It's that, yeah, I mean, yeah, he is basically afraid of getting caught, you know, and not, not because he wants to be able to keep doing what he's doing. And uh, let's see, we have the, um, yeah, um, very fun when he does the pitch and like, you can stay in the, was it California or you can stay in Nevada kind of thing, you know. And I, let's see, I believe it's, yeah, I believe it's Doc asks, you know, can, is there a map of this place? Which, that's the kind of thing, like, you know, yeah, it's, it's a hotel, you know, it's not like he went to, you know, if, it would be really off-putting if he, like, went into a bank and asks, okay, where are all the exits? It's like, okay, you're trying to rob this place. I see that. But no, it's a, it's a hotel. You know, and, and the, you know, guys, you know, rip off, here you go, here's a map. You know, he, he's got a, he's got like a, a whole thing of maps for, you know. But... As it also turns out, it's because he, you know, there's something hidden, you know, here. And then we get the first of several, I guess I can't call it a coin flip because it's more like he, he makes it like spin on the, on the countertop, but, you know, yeah. And, and like the, the vacuum salesman is basically like, you know, here, have this, Father, in case you want to flip a coin or something. And he's he's basically making a joke about it. But again, that puts that idea in our heads. Flipping coins. Hmm. You know, and the... the um, might there be something there? And he does actually flip a coin. And it's the kind of thing of, like... If you don't think he's looking for something, you might just think, yeah, you know, what... Actually, if you... If we th think at that point he's looking for something, why is he flipping a coin? How how could he be looking for something and not know where it is? You know that kind of throws a throws a wrench in that. Uh, you know maybe he's there for some. You know, no, you know flipping a coin. It's like who can't? You know they're they're the same. The rooms are the same. You know it's a it's a hotel. It's not one of those. Th you know other than the honeymoon suite. The, the, every room in this place is the same, you know, if, or every every California room is the same as every other California room, and, you know, same for the Nevada rooms, you know. So, so yeah, very, very nicely done, and, and yeah, you know, later in, in the movie, it actually is life or death that's being decided by, you know, a 50-50 a shot. And... The, the, um, yeah, you know, that again works with this, like, it's a, it's a movie that features several acts of random violence, you know, uh, Emily had no intention of shooting Miles, for example, the, the, um, so, so, yeah, you know, you, yeah, it's a, it's the flip of a coin, live or die, you know, not, not everyone who does something good lives, you know, the, like, you know, John Hamm dies trying to save a kidnap victim, you know, and, and the, the, you know, overall, most of the, yeah, the, the two who survive are perhaps the, the most, like, morally pure, but even they are, are not quite, you know, like, the... I, I don't particularly blame Darlene. She knew that something was going on with, with Doc before hitting him. Doc did rob. Uh, I do they say? I think it was a, a bank he robbed, so he may have, like, pointed his gun at someone, threatened to kill them, you know, so... That's obviously bad, you know. Robbing a bank by itself, like, I, I, I agree that it's wrong to go into a bank with a gun and rob it. I don't think it should be okay to rob a bank using, you know, white collar crime either. I, I, the only thing I ask is consistency. I don't think that 
you know, the, the white collar criminals tend to hurt significantly more people than the, the you know, yeah, someone who, who gets out a gun and, and commits a crime like that. But, but yeah, you know, not everybody who's good survives the film, and I, th I think an argument could be made that no one is good in the film. There's just, there's different layers of great, like, obviously Billy Lee is one of the worst. You know, encouraging others to commit murder because he feels like it kind of thing. But no one is completely pure in, in the film. And, you know, that's very, very noir and very realistic. And let's see. Yeah. Um, Emily gets in and, you know, <laughs> she she wants the the honeymoon suite. And, you know, John Hamm is like, I that is the only one that I, you know, will accept. She's like, fine, you know, give me give me that one instead. I quite like the detail that the the key chains have the 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 state, uh, yeah, of of the particular, yeah. And you know, he's like, ma'am, you you have to you have to sign this, you know. Fine. And you know, walks off, and then is, is she wrote, "Fuck you," <laughs> which you know. She is perhaps the most profane character, which, you know, made me kind of like, you know, I've, I've always hated people who immediately judge people who swear, so I tend to like people who swear in, in movies. It's, it's petty. It's, it's stubborn. I, I acknowledge that. But the, the, of, of me. To, to like them more. Anyway, yeah, um, and, you know, she, she storms off, and it is this thing of, you know, you feel like, okay, there's something going on with her, and, yeah, you know, she, she kidnapped someone, but it turns out to be her sister, and she was actually rescuing her sister from Billy Lee. But, but, yeah, you know, the fact that she's in such a hurry to get past the, and, and, you know, her not writing her name, you know, oh, maybe, it, like, she's a hippie, maybe she's just, like, you know, fighting the man, but maybe she's hiding something, maybe she does not want her name, and, and, you know, that is essentially, yeah, later on, you know, she said she, she knew Billy Lee would come for her, she was hoping to be ready, yeah, she was probably hoping that, he, at the very least, wouldn't be, you know, yeah, be sure that, although it actually, it meant that he immediately, you know, he, he took one look and it's, okay, fuck you, that's Emily. And, yeah, we see the, the, we see John Hamm, you know, getting out all of his, the, the, you know, lockpick looking tools. And he calls his wife, who puts the daughter on, and he's like, the the clock is right, daddy is late. You know, that's, and yeah, you know, he, he repeats this prayer, which again, you know, Christianity, and, because there's this thing, like, that's the thing that he, you know, the, the, um, you know, I, I don't know which of the two it matters more to, but evidently both of them want to make sure that not a single night passes where she goes to bed without praying with him. You know, this idea of you will be protected by by this, which is also, you know, as Miles is dying, the, the one thing he wants is to make sure that he's been forgiven by by a priest. You know, he wants to confess his sins and, and be forgiven so he doesn't go to hell. Which, you know, you, you go to heaven for the climate and hell for the company. But the, the you know, Miles feels very bad about his sin, which, 
Considering some of what we hear, fair enough. But just keep in mind, if you don't sin, you make Jesus look like a complete idiot for dying for your sin. But the, yeah, um, I, I really love the detail. That this, this is again where, you know, a lesser writer would just have the, the prayer. But no, you know, he, you know, she doesn't want him to, the, the let's see, the, um, it's the, let's see, it's the, it's the part with, if I should die, let's see, uh, let's see, it's something like, if, if I should die before I wake, you know, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And then, you know, where did you hear the word morbid? And, you know, apparently mommy thinks that that's morbid, which, yeah, you know, I don't, we don't even see this woman or hear her voice or anything, but I like her already. It's, I've, I've always hated how just... Think about how gross it is to, to be saying, you know, so if I die before, like, I get, if you're, if you believe in that sort of thing, you know, I get that it brings comfort, but I'd like to think that you could still appreciate it's pretty creepy to be talking about, you know, so I might die in my sleep, but, you know, just, yeah. And it's also just the thing, it, it made a lot more sense back when, that kind of thing happened a lot more back, you know, before we understood disease and, and, like, there's a lot of causes of death that people used to not know. And so, yeah, you might die during your sleep, even though you went to bed and it seemed like there was nothing wrong, you know. So, the, but yeah, you know, they, they change it to, to this other thing that isn't so, so morbid. And I really like that it's during the prayer that he's finding these bugs. So we have this on the one hand, you know, it, it's, I, I appreciate it can be, it's, it's sweet. He's, he's being a good father. He's taking care of her. That's also a thing. Like, they make sure we know he left behind a daughter and a wife. You know, it's not, and he's actually, he's the first of the major characters we meet to die. You know, the at the very start, one of the robbers dies, but we only get to know him way, way later in the movie. But yeah, you know, we see John Hamm's character die, and, you know, he was trying to save a kidnapped, you know, a young kidnapped woman, and he's, you know, his his daughter still wants him to, to repeat the prayer every night before she goes to bed, you know, kind of thing. Like, she was clearly upset that he called her late which you know that is also like he was clearly squirrely he he really did not like the fact that they hadn't been able to check into a room yet you know and he's not gonna make that call on like the the what's it called the phone in the in the parking lot but but yeah you know He's he's saying this prayer as he is looking for for bugs, you know. There there are, you know, in in this film, someone might spy on someone else. Someone might be seemingly doing something innocent, whilst actually doing something kind of sinister. You know, showing that it is right under the surface, like. Literally, as he is reassuring his daughter, you know, God is taking care of you. He's also finding these these bugs, and we realize why it was so important to him to find to to have the the um, honeymoon suite. You know, he was looking for all these bugs, and as he says on the phone there were other bugs it wasn't only ours you know and let's see right real quick um there's a couple of you know there's some stuff in the imdb frequently asked questions that you know helps yeah 
helps with some some stuff that you know you you may not be completely sure you you understood fully from watching the movie and yeah so he you know he sees that miles is is on you know on drugs which you know considering what we later find out you know and when, and when we see that we might think oh that's what he wants to confess this is the thing that's bothering him but yeah later we realize you know he's like he's still thinking about all the people that he killed during the war which yeah you know a lot of people were were traumatized by vietnam Let's see and and you know then you have you know people like trump who made sure that he wouldn't have to go to vietnam and then later described having unprotected sex but avoiding stds as his personal vietnam because the man is a complete an utter asshole who does not care about other people in the slightest. Let's see, and yeah, and and you know, John Hamm finds the the two-way mirrors and sees that Doc is, you know, in the process of of unburying the the you know because he you know he didn't remember for sure which room it was as we find out later. Flipped a coin, got the wrong room, and yeah, we get the first of several parts where we hear Darlene sing, and you know, come to understand, that's why she wanted a room away from the others, you know, so that she could practice her singing because she you know yeah she's her her career is is struggling and let's see the yeah and John Hamm spots you know Emily getting a a kidnap victim out of her car and you know tying her to a chair which I am, because I feel like, is it, is it wrong to make a joke about how now she's in the other position than her character in the Fifty Shades films that, you know, maybe she just ended up liking tying, you know, people being tied up so much that she started doing it herself? Because it's, I, I feel like it's, it's probably wrong because she did it to her sister, which, yeah, and without consent, but the, yeah, let's see, um, yeah, and I, I like the fact that we, you know, John Hamm watches it for, for several, several seconds without doing anything, you know, there's the, just, and, you know, to be fair, it is probably, you know, he's, he's trying to figure out, should I, do something or should I call this in first you know but yeah it is a movie where people sometimes witness something horrible and don't do anything about it at least not right away and yeah you know he calls it in and you know yeah the FBI say no don't help you know which you know someone pointed out in the in the IMDb a goof section that doesn't make a ton of sense because you know some someone put it as like a, a plot hole which I mean it doesn't really affect the plot it it would essentially be the movie would happen the same way if it wasn't but you know basically I I appreciate Drew Goddard's stance against the the FBI and Perhaps especially Hoover, who, you know, if you know very much about him, he was kind of a bastard. You know, he, it, it, if you look at stuff he did, it becomes clear, like, 
there was definitely, it was necessary to be able to prosecute criminals who crossed state lines. You know, it used to be a mess. But he took advantage of that power to basically blackmail people. You know, he wanted to make sure he had something on, you know, pretty much anyone he felt he, he wanted to have power over. You know, it... You know, they it would have it would have made more sense if they specifically said, but but yeah. Uh, let's see, yeah, and we're about 35 minutes in before the first jump back in, in time. And we see Darlene yelled at by just, I, let's see, what, um, yeah, I'm afraid I, I forget the, the name of the, the character, um, let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing it in the, um, in the memorable quote section, but just, you know, a complete bastard. You really hate this guy for, for treating her like this, you know, flexing on her and, and talking about, you know, my time is more valuable than yours, and just, yeah, really, really obnoxious and... Yeah, the the um, yeah really love the the match cut after the the conversation. She's standing there looking at her own reflection, and it cuts, and we're back in her room, and she's looking at the the mirror, which she doesn't know yet is a is a two way mirror. And she apologizes for singing loudly, which is she's just she's very sweet, you know. Like we should all be so lucky. As to to for for that to be the thing that we we're hearing in a in a hotel or or something like that you know not not something much more obnoxious sounding than just yeah um, and you know he does say your singing was lovely and you know invites her to to eat with him right just so so i don't forget great seeing shay wiggum in this it's it's kind of funny to me that i watched this just a few days after watching one of the episodes he's in of agent carter you know he's been in stuff that isn't like you know period pieces you know i i recently saw him also in mission impossible 7 and spider-man across the spider-verse you know but he is really, really good in these period pieces, you know. This Joker, Agent Carter, yeah, just... Oh yeah, Wolf of Wall Street also. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the... Let's see. So yeah, on you know on the TV we hear two people have been murdered, which you know that is the thing that you know Rosie did. Which I got the the part where you know she's like, 
What did, what did I do? Oh, that. Sorry about that. Just. Oh my God. Just like this. This juxtaposition. Because if you hear that line, if you hear her deliver that line, and you don't know that she's talking about a double homicide, you know, it sounds like you know she's talking about. I, I don't know. Like. She, Maybe, maybe she, she, you know, her, her mama told her to, to take the food out. Now, she waited a couple of minutes, and now it's slightly burnt. It's like, mm, sorry about that. Just, you know, but no, she, she stabbed two people to death because, you know, the cult leader told her to. And just, yeah, really, really nicely done with the, just, yeah. But but yeah, you know that is that helps underline the you know yeah it is dangerous and you know as, as someone points out in the frequently asked questions you know it's it sounds kind of like the the um, what's it called the um, ah crap right on the tip of my tongue um, I do not have crap on the tip of my tongue. Manson family, the the you know the murders of, of Sharon Tate, and yeah, um, so the the you know it's yeah it it also works for for that now the but but yeah you know it it underlines this this is a very dangerous time and. Then the, um, uh, let's see, yeah, um, you know, Doc asks, you know, did did you write that song? Oh no, it's the Isley Brothers. Your brothers, you know. So you can tell that there's something, you know, and also uh, there's, a th I think this is the the conversation where like he apparently, you know, she's like, oh, you know, church choir, yeah, you know, we we must have sung some of the same songs and she mentions several that like I've never it's not it's not that I've never gone to a church you know I I have gone just to make sure that I didn't catch on fire but I'm I've never heard I've heard church choir music but I've never heard American church choir music but even I know the songs she mentions you know th those are yeah like old standbys like if you've been in an American church and you've heard a church choir you have probably heard one of those three you know so the fact that he doesn't recognize them at all you know and and he says you know he, he points out about his, his bad memory but it does also help you know underline yeah he's not a priest and um, you know I, I like the thing you know she says you know, we're going to have to address the fact that you don't know who the Isley Brothers are. So she puts on one of their songs. How lucky are you feeling? Not lucky enough to try eating that sandwich. I agree. That is that is not... Yeah, they're just... Hmm. That... Miles, please get rid of those. That... No. And... Yeah, they, they again talk about different denominations, and he opens up about these, you know, problems with his, his memory. And, let's see. Yeah, and we have the thing, you know, used to be close to brother. And later, you know, yeah, like his, so his brother... I'm almost certain his brother was the one who buried the money and was then shot. So, you know, yeah, we used to be close until he was murdered 10 years ago. And, uh, right, and another thing from the, the um, uh, frequently asked questions, you know, someone asked the, the thing with, um, let's see, um, Right, yeah, someone apparently thought that the that it was Doc who shot Felix 
at the at the start. Yeah, I. Anyway, the the um, yeah the the new guy was the the one they that shot the that shot Felix, and he was aware of the El Royale Hotel's their de designated hideout meeting place because that was part of the original plan. He was unaware that Doc had told Felix to bury the money under the floorboards, which is how it's still there ten years later. And uh, let's see the. Yeah, you know, the, the, you know, it becomes clear that the doc actually can't remember his real name, you know, which, yeah, it's a, it's a very, it's, it's legitimately sad, the, the monologue. So, yeah, very, very nicely done. The, the writing and delivery both are really great. And I quite like the the delicious line. You know, he's he's like, I, I don't want to drink alone. Can I tempt you? Which you know, in in the actual situation, that is, you know, that's a that's a very cheeky thing for a priest to say to a Christian. But it is also this thing of you know, yeah, the the. The movie is in part about can you, you know, do do you give in to temptation or can you, you know, yeah, can can you fight back against it? And yeah, we see him spiking the drink, and I love like, you know, I'm as I see him spike the drink, I'm like, okay, so there's a couple of options, maybe he's gonna accidentally mix up the glasses and drink it himself or maybe he manages to take her out and if so you know what exactly is he planning to to do and and then you know she smacks him in the face with the bottle and it's like oh okay that's where that was going I you know let's see and um What did I write? Okay, I'm gonna have to just move. Oh, right, yeah, we're we're back to to John Hamm, you know, reporting on the the thing, and then he, you know, he sabotages sabotages the car. Oh, right, this is when we're told that the the hostage is not a priority, and yeah, so the the. Yeah, we meet Rosie, and, you know, I mean, I'm straight, I can appreciate, you know, it, it must be very compelling if, if Chris Hemsworth strips naked and asks you to swim on, on a beach with him. That is, that is probably, like, I would politely decline... But I do not blame anyone who, you know, I, you know, I like watching him in movies. I don't want to see him naked, despite how much some people at Marvel keep wanting that to, to be a thing. But, you know, no, he's, he's legitimately charismatic. Now, you know, some, some people have said they didn't feel like he was completely up to, to, to it. I I think he is at least maybe a tiny bit overexposed. I, mm -hmm. That was not an intentional pun, I swear. It would probably have been good if he was slightly... If he had slightly less screen time. But I did really appreciate, like, there's... I'm not really seeing Thor in there, despite the fact that these are both charismatic people who have a philosophy who you know there's a lot of people who would follow them they both smile and, and laugh and such but they're very distinct and I I really appreciate that it did not feel like oh he's just coasting you know it really I, I haven't watched Chris Hemsworth in very much other than Thor I do think he's great in a perfect getaway 
but th right, and I do like his uh, Huntsman in in the, the in the two Huntsman movies. You know the the snow the Snow White one, and then the one that's like I guess Snow White's technically still part of this universe, but we're gonna focus on the Huntsman because people don't like Kristen Stewart right now. But the um, yeah, you know he's. In each of these, he plays his role very differently. Oh, right, he is in Men in Black International. I uh, I had not forgotten that movie existed. Um, okay, yeah, I had. But the... yeah, that's not his finest hour. That's another. This is one of those movies. I, is anyone that great in that movie? Anyway, in each of these, he plays the role differently. He's not just trying to to do the same exact thing over and over. You know the the. Um, I, you know there's there's way more difference. You know if if you you know he's a he's a big you know mus muscly dude with with a european accent and he stars in action movies so you know i don't think it's entirely unfair to compare him to someone like arnold schwarzenegger who i think he does fantastic acting as in in the first conan movie in the first two terminator movies you know but a lot of schwarzenegger's career and i say this as someone who's enjoyed watching his movies a lot of it, he's kind of playing this. He's doing the same thing over and over, you know. Which, you know, that was what audiences wanted from action stars at that time. But, you know, I'm not going to claim I'm above it. That, you know, I was, I was more of a Jean Claude Van Damme fan than an Arnold fan. But yeah, I'll, you know, there's a lot of Van Damme movies that I sat down to watch. I was looking for him to play, you know, a, a gentle, you know, heart of gold badass who does splits and flying kicks, you know, is, so, but, but yeah, Hemsworth is very clearly trying to, to make sure that people are able to see him as something other than only Thor, which is, of course, not going to last forever. Despite the fact that he has, he's the only original Avenger to have gotten four solo movies. But but yeah, like you, he does come across as legitimately manipulative here, which doesn't really happen with his his Thor and the you know in in both cases he's inspiring other people to go out and and kill for him. So you could like. And are you know you could you could perhaps understand if he tried to just play them the same, but it really feels to me like he is looking to to show that he's capable of other, you know, yeah, you know, other other performances, very very different performances from this, and yeah, so um, John Hamm sabotages the cars. I always appreciate, you know, there's movies like this, they kind of need the cars not to work. They kind of need for people to not be able to escape. This one actually explains that. I appreciate that. And, right, I, I don't think I, I quite underlined, I really appreciate, you know, early on, like, he takes out a couple of bugs and, you know, over the course of it, he, he gets out a lot of these bugs. And you do come to realize that was more than he was expecting to find, you know, and he, yeah, he says there were other bugs than the ones we planted, you know, so that's a great, it's, yeah. And let's see, uh, yeah, so we, yeah, John Hamm, despite what he's been told, and that is also actually, that is interesting, he specifically chooses to do what at least appears to be the right thing, and it leads to, you know, it directly leads to his death. It's not like, oh, and then later. No, he gets killed trying to do the right thing. And, yeah, you know, I really appreciate it. Because at first, you know, he's, he knocks on the door and he's like, so, 
you know, let's see, what is it he says? He says something like, you know, can I come in and check if the electrical stuff works? Which is also like, I mean, that's a pretty, that's a decent enough story. You know, I'm, I'm not sure he expects her to actually give in so much as, you know, he was probably always going to, to try to break down the door like he ends up doing. But yeah, you know, it is the kind of thing that the, the, yeah, it's a thunderstorm. And later on, the electricity does go out just as he, you know, claimed that it had. But, but yeah, you know, he, there, there's this brief bit where we're not sure if he is going to bust down the door or if he's going to give up after the, yeah. And the, let's see, yeah, he, you know, he knocks Emily to the, to the floor in order to, to save Rosie. And, you know, you have just a little bit of blood on, on her forehead. And then it cuts to her abusive father. And, yeah, you know, the, the, and we have that thing, you know, don't, what was it? Um, uh, let's see, that was, uh, that was a MDB trivia. I'm just going to make sure to get the exact right. So let's see the, um, yeah. Uh, when Emily has to choose a color for the roulette, she chooses red, a reference to an earlier scene where she lies on the floor and is told to not touch her wound and is told, the next time you want to get smart, you look down at all that red, you think twice. You know, so very, very nicely done there. And let's see the... Um, yeah, so the... Um, you know, yeah, and, and we see that she got, you know, she made sure Rosie, you know, was under the bed, and yeah, she she took out their abusive father, and, you know, that is, that is a great backstory for this kind of, you know, yeah, there, there are, uh, in stories like this, a bunch of strangers in an isolated location, and you're trying to figure out who's, who's guilty, who's innocent, a lot of them. There's at least one person who has at least one murder in their past, you know, and yeah, very, very, very nicely done with that. And yeah, she, you know, she gets Rosie to step out of the way and Rosie's like, yeah, sure. You know, like it's, it's she's not reacting like, oh, you know, my sister's about to shoot someone in the fucking chest with a shotgun and, and kill him on the spot, you know, and yeah, she, she shoots, and then we hear coughing, and it's like, oh, fuck, no, you know, just, yeah, very nicely done, and yeah, it is the sort of thing, you know, that is something that can happen if you're hiding behind a two-way mirror, and someone fires a shotgun, you know, with all the, like, it would be one thing if it was, like, a handgun, and the bullet doesn't go through the, the body, and it's only one bullet, but yeah, buckshot, it's, you know, the part that doesn't hit him spreads out and, and hits Miles. Which is also when we get the excellent line. You know, he's like, how bad does it look? And she's like, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I don't remember what you looked like before. But I think you should make peace with the fact that things have changed. Which is just, love that line. Holy crap, that's ominous. And then we have the... Let's see. Yeah, so the, um, let's see. Doc tries to get the, 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 um, the universal key. And, you know, he's, he's told, you know, they pay for the, the film. And, you know, oh, it's, it's management, you know. It's, which I also, I appreciate, you know, no, it's not some, you know, uh, you know, cabal of, of people who are in a conspiracy. No, it's literally just the, yeah, they're making, they're, they're probably making significantly more money, you know, blackmailing people like that than they are just having people stay at the hotel. And yeah, you know, if you, if you have no morals, that is the kind of thing you might do. And yeah, so the, the, 
they talk about the the film he he saved one uh, you know yeah one particular film and that's the thing the the Okay, the way that some of these are worded, because in the frequently asked questions, one one of the questions is, why did they burn the film at the end if it was worth so much? I like to think that it's not that someone didn't understand that, like, that's, like, that's a big, it's important for the movie that they not burn the film, that they specifically, because they have a choice. You can do the, you know, yeah, you can do this really self-serving thing, or you can help someone. You know, and throughout the film, this kind of choice keeps coming up for various characters. So, if they made the wrong choice there at the end, it would really undermine the the movie. So, yeah, but yeah, uh, you know, maybe it was worded that way in case someone came to frequently asked questions wondering that exact question. But yeah, uh, the answer is of course to prevent any embarrassment to the family of the person on the film or to generally not damage his reputation and memory. Now, the... let's see... Um, yeah, so the, they watch the the sisters through the, the two-way mirror, and the... yeah, we see Miles shot by Emily, and... Let's see them. Yeah, the the. Yeah, we have yeah. Um, Darlene is trying to escape, but you know the car won't start, and you know she she prays. You know I'm I am in darkness. I need your light. Look, Rudolph is very busy this time of year, and then we have the. Um, right, yeah, Rosie calls Billy Lee and, you know, gives him the name of the hotel and then it's, yeah, it's easy enough for him to find and get there. And, yeah, I, I like that, you know, Darlene in the car says something like, help me lord. And then Doc shows up. So it is like, and again, like if you thought he was a priest, it's like, oh, you know, he he was guided by God's hand there. But you know, yeah. So so I, you know, we know that he's not a priest. So that's a fun bit of you know expectation subversion. I'm just saying, there's no hard feelings for you hitting me in the face with a bottle. Right, I appreciate the, I, I don't know why I didn't write it down until this point, but I appreciate, you know, she had to run silent, you know, quietly to get to there, to, to where he was without being being hurt. hurt. So she took off the heels at the jukebox, very nicely done. And, yeah, we learn about his you know, him robbing the bank and them, them agreeing to meet at the El Royale. And, yeah, you know, he was in prison and he got into fights with, you know, yeah, me Mexicans and just, yeah, you know, basically based on, on racism and you know, it's it sounds like oh maybe that is why, but uh, you know, I, if I recall, they they talk about it's you know it's it's not brain damage, it is Alzheimer's, and apparently some people thought oh you know it wouldn't have said Alzheimer's back then, and you know someone helpfully pointed out in the MDB goof section they didn't say Alzheimer's, you thought Alzheimer's, but the, they didn't. Let's see if I can get the exact wording. Um, there we go. So, let's see the... Um, 
Yeah, th that's right. The doctor s says dementia or Alzheimer's. You know, which, yeah. Yeah, someone thought, you know, oh, f you know, Flynn would not have known Alzheimer's, that, that word, because it wasn't being used, you know, by anyone other than, than doctors. Anyway, the, um, let's see, yeah, and, you know, she, Darlene points out, you know, if you've been shook enough times in your life, you learn to spot a shaker. So, yeah. This is the, of, of the two movies she was in, in the year 2018, in both of them, she is street smart, so I quite appreciate that. Maybe she is in some of the other movies. I'd, I'd like to see her in more stuff. Anyway, uh, so yeah, they, they weigh the options, and yeah, Miles, like... You know, yeah. Miles thought, "Oh, you know, father, you have some, you have some glass in, in your head," and now he's the one with with glass in his head. And yeah, the thing with the wolf that I I agree, uh, Miles, you did not have to tell us that. And <laughs> and we have the thing of you know, I don't even know your names. I'm Rosie. She's Emily. And Emily's like, you see what I have to deal with? She's like this all the time, by the way. This is this is 24-7, 365 for me. So bear with me here. And um, let's see. Yeah, I I really liked when, you know, so so yeah, uh Emily now, you know. Yeah, everyone inside the hotel now knows about the two-way mirror. So Emily goes to to carefully watch, you know, Darlene, and Darlene and Doc knew that that was an option since they, you know, they both are aware that, you know, Emily shot through the the two-way mirror and hit someone behind. You know, if she hadn't hit someone behind there, she might not have really thought about it, but she realized, okay, someone has been, been spying on us here. Uh, let's, I, I suppose it's possible she would have, when she saw that there was a hallway behind the, the mirror. But yeah, the, you know, the camera turns around Darlene as she's singing, and we see Doc on the, on the floor working on getting out, and then she claps to cover the noise as he, you know, hammers to, to, Open the floor. Very nicely done. Just, yeah. And... Let's see. Then we have the... Right, and, and yeah, you know, Rosie says, you know, I keep telling Miles, it ain't up to us. And then, you know, of course, then we have the question, who is it up to? And, uh, yeah, you know, the the let's see yeah very soon after we we see the we get Billy Lee it's some some I guess it's not backstory but we see a little of what he's been been doing and yeah and and Emily actually offers Miles the the drug to to get the cooperation. But yeah, um, Billy Lee, you know, he's, he's, yeah, so I, I like that, you know, Emily says, well, you know, Rosie says you treat her right, so that's something. I'm not entirely sure if she was already at that time. No, no, she seems surprised later. So she must have actually been telling the truth there. You know, but, but yeah, the, the, you know, she's she's she is there to protect Rosie. She's she's always been very protective of her since she had to protect Rosie from their abusive father. And yeah, you know, he's he he's giving this big monologue and he asks Rosie pick between right and wrong. And she says neither, and people laugh. And I like the detail that he's like, ah, see, she knows where I'm going with this. 
So she's being a little cheeky. No, Rosie, seriously. You have to pick. You know, he is aware that it is possible that someone might question, but he is not willing to not go through with the metaphor, which, you know, I appreciate, you know, sometimes visually demonstrating something can be stronger than just verbally explaining it, but it's completely unnecessary to have these two young women beat each other, you know, so, yeah, he does it because he can, because it makes him feel powerful to get people to get violent with each other, you know, and... Yeah, it is basically a cult, and cult members are pitted against each other a, a lot of times. It's something the cult leader does in order to prevent them from ganging up on him. You know, it's it's very, like, it, it's not purely cults, it's also, you know, capitalism does it, patriarchy does it, any power system that wants to make sure that the the powerless don't you know take away the power because they very frequently outnumber the powerful they're going to you know encourage infighting and discourage the people seeing each other as equals and and you know trying to, a, a lot of you know if, A lot of the struggles of racism is because of a few powerful, you know, here in the West it's white people, but, uh, you know, it's it's always the, the majority, you know, population kind of thing. The, you know, they spread these really hateful stereotypes about the, the minority groups so that... As long you know, in in America, there's a lot of white conservatives. As long as you tell them that they are inherently superior to to non-whites, and you tell the men that they're superior to the women, they will let you walk all over them. As long as they don't feel like they're at the bottom. And let's see the. We have the, yeah, and, you know, another aspect of the the cult after he does what feels at times like a stand-up routine, you know, he he's presenting this alternate philosophy. You know, he's saying they tell you you have to choose, but the choice is, you know, is, is a, a fiction. And the thing is, yeah, you know, the... the the idea that it is always easy to to yeah yeah sometimes it is not easy and and very frequently the the more ethical choice is not the one that the established religion which you know here in the west is often christianity but in other places not you know other religions yeah you know the established the the dominant religion is not necessarily going to promote what's right it's more likely to just fight to make sure that it maintains power and yeah you know this this cult is you know it's not necessarily that every idea they have is wrong so it's important to also look at their actions their behavior and that's where it really falls apart it is completely unnecessary for the for the demonstration to to have you know to to force these two to fight like Rosie expresses very clearly she's not she doesn't want to do this but he keeps pushing and eventually she gives in you know and that's the kind of thing you know yeah if if you're being forced to engage in violence for for no reason you know it's essentially violence should only be to protect someone else, you or someone else, from violence. 
and let's see. Yeah, um, I quite yeah, and and then you know, Miles's mouth is tied shut, which I don't know. There is probably a market for you know having. Chris Hemsworth tie you up and and you know do something to your mouth. I don't judge. And then you know they, he says, make sure there's room in the trunks. And you know we get several reaction shots. It's like, oh, that's not good. That is no bueno. Please, yeah, we you know it makes us really hope that they're able to to stop Billy Lee and his cult. And Let's see. Yeah, the the questioning is nicely done, and <laughs> I kind of love when when Doc is like, "Oh, so what's what's that song?" And she's like, oh, "I am um, Deep Purple, I think." Mm. It's not for me. That's that is a very calm reaction during this uh, yeah and also you know we have the the note that you know um what's it called the the thing that you know uh, billy says he doesn't like it he doesn't like quiet it creeps him out which you know i mean i'm not the, the following is not true of everyone that doesn't like when it's quiet but that can be a sign of insecurity. You know, he does not like to be alone with his thoughts because those thoughts are very, very dark. And, you know, his actions are as well. So that really tells us, okay, his thoughts must be horrific if that's, you know, if it's even worse than than the murders he's carrying out, you know, and then he says, "So who wants to play next?" And it's like, "Oh my fucking Christ!" You know, just yeah, he he's going to keep doing this. He's he he's getting off on this. He is a sadist, and yeah, just you know, we 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 really can't wait to see him taken out. So yeah, Let's see, this is also one of those. Like there's a lot of deconstructed villains today, and you know I I like it a lot of the time. I I do think it was the right choice. He this is very much not deconstructed. Like he's or wait, I guess maybe the 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 tearing down the verbal tearing down Darlene gives maybe that counts as deconstruction. But I it just it's not the same way as, you know, we're not seeing his childhood and all and the things that made him the way he is. Anyway, the um, let's see, then we have the Yeah, and and you know, this this thing of you know, there's a chance that you might make it through this. Uh, you know, there's a lot of random violence in this and, and violence that could have been avoided you know which I really appreciate it is not a movie that says violence is necessary there's a lot of you know a lot of movies that basically say oh violence it, without violence we can't solve problems and this is a movie where a lot of the violence it's it's not at all yeah it's not at all necessary you know if if John Hamm had approached Emily and said, you know, we're, we're FBI, if you are running from something, we can protect you. You know, if she if she said, you know, Billy Lee is responsible for multiple murders, I know where he lives, I can give you an exact description of what he looks like, you know. I mean, I don't know if... I can imagine that, that there would still have been some, some conflict there, but it might have worked out much better, but, you know, he was convinced that she was awful, not realizing that she's actually protecting Rosie from worse. Which does not mean, you know, in real life, if you see someone kidnapped, yeah, help them, definitely. Let's see, then we have the... 
Right, and I, yeah, I like the thing with you. There was something I didn't mention. I hate priests. Do you want to rethink your story? No. And then we have the... Uh, uh, right, and yeah, Miles really struggles with the idea that Doc is not a real priest. And yeah, just really love Darlene tearing down Billy, you know, this thing of, you know, you're, you're insecure, you're small, and you just feel, you feel a need for power, and just really great acting by Hemsworth. Like, you can tell that, no, she's 100%, she saw right through him, and the, the, you know, and, and he, the, yeah, there's a part, a point where he, like, starts to say, let's see, yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, right, the, the, yeah, uh, the, let's see, um, yeah, they're, t t you know, they're talking, they're seemingly talking about the, the, un the, the film that, you know, that ends up being burned later. It's, you know, like, it's revealing what's the true situation for... A particular setting in a Canadian movie. I think I'll leave it at that. But yeah, the the if you know, you know. Yes, the the yeah, you know. He asks, you know, do you know who's on this film? And Darlene says, let me guess. It's some man who talks a lot. He talks so much that he thinks he believes in something, and really just wants to fuck who he wants to fuck. I've seen it enough. I'm not even mad about it anymore. I'm just. Bored. I'm t I'm just tired of men like you. You think I don't see you for who you really are? A fragile little man, preying on the weak and the lost. And Billy Lee starts to say, yeah, well, if I... And she interrupts him and says, I've heard it, and I don't care. I'd rather sit here and listen to the rain. Just fantastic. It's just complete... And, yeah, you know, the acting on him, like... He, you know, when you see him in, like, interviews, he is he is very confident. He can also show like vulnerability in interviews and such but yeah like he is he is a very confident person a lot of the time at least so for him to to you know come across as as like oh wow she really saw right through me and you know he's trying to regain control but yeah she doesn't even, you know normally when he talks people listen and she doesn't, you know, just, and, and the fact that she's able to see right through him, you know, yeah, it's the first time she's met a cult leader, but cult leaders are, if, if you look at their personality, they're not always that different from, yeah, you know, yeah, they're, they're narcissists, and, it just, you know, yeah, that, that, yeah, that is about it, they're, they're narcissists, and yeah, you there's a lot of narcissists just out in society, you know, of a fraction of narcissists form cults, but many of them just, you know, yeah, they, they don't. So yeah, she's met other narcissists. She recognizes that he's the same, you know, he's he kills more people, you know, there, there are a number of narcissists who never kill anyone, but that's it it's it's a it's a it's a matter of degrees it's a distinction without a difference there's no so so yeah and you know later you know earlier in the film she told doc you spend your life getting shook you learn how to spot a shaker that's exactly what she does there so so very nice little it, it would feel really weird if miles was the one just cutting right through you know let's see and then we have the let's see um what on earth did I write right the yeah um doc struggles to remember his his real name and the yeah the thunder cuts out the electricity and yeah, we get the line about not liking when it's quiet. And 
Yeah, so he yeah, he has her sing and then he says, I've heard better, so he's still going to to kill her, you know. And then we get the 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 action heavy finale. And it's one of those things like I already knew that Drew Goddard was great at directing action because he does also do some of that in the the Cabin in the Woods. Sometimes when I watch a, a really great film and then the like the ending has some really great action, it leaves me feeling like why wasn't there much more of that action? I don't need every movie I watch to be an action movie, but when you have a great cast and like really great cinematography and editing, and you're you know, and, and yeah, and a, and a story, and, you, and you're and you able to do really great action direction. Sometimes I, I get frustrated when there's only, a, you know, some action at the very, very end, and it's like, we could have been getting that, you know, in, in much more of the film, but only here at the end. Here, I, it honestly felt just, yeah, the, the, I thought it worked. The, the, it feels like, it's just been building and building, and finally, we just have this explosion of, of action. You know, the, there's more there's more action in a short space of time here at the very end than in the rest of the movie combined. You know, it's maybe 15 minutes from the end that we start getting prolonged action, and yeah, you know, it just, yeah, it felt... Like the the buildup was was paying off. Let's see, and yeah, and Miles says I can't kill more. You know, and and yeah, he says he killed 123 people, and we get a Nom flashback, and yeah, you know, it is that thing. Yeah, as a as a kid, he was a crack shot when you know he was shooting birds out of the sky and then he became a sniper and he killed yeah a, a huge amount of, of people and it just really yeah it's it he's he's struggled with the with recovering from that emotionally and psychologically and that was the truth for a lot of, of people who served in, in Vietnam and, and yeah, you know, th over the course of the film, there's maybe half a dozen brief bursts of violence, and then here at the end, we get a, yeah, sustained bit. And, yeah. Um, Miles is indeed really, really good at killing people. And, let's see, the... You know, maybe you should ask Tom why. And, you know, he, yeah, he lowers his guard with Rosie, who is devastated that Billy is dead, and stabs Miles to the point where he bleeds out very soon after. And, yeah, um... Again, it's this thing, you know, he, he looks at her and he thinks she must be innocent. She's just, you know, she's so young. She, yeah, he, he can, he can't really wrap his head around the the fact, you know, I, I mean, at this point, he must know that she was the one who called the cult leader. And, yeah, the cult leader tormented him along with the others, so, but he just, he can't. And, and that again, you know, I'm not saying that if you see someone who looks like young and innocent that you shouldn't trust them. It's more of, it's a, it's a movie thing, not a, you know, anyway, the, you know, it's, if you're, if you're going to not trust someone young and innocent seeming, it should be because, like, there's significant witness statement against them or physical evidence or something. Anyway, let's see. Yeah, and the, yeah, 
Rosie is shot, and yeah, you know, Miles insists that he wants to confess, and it's very clear it it gives him some hope to to yeah. And you know, he says, "I've I've done a lot of sin in my life, more than I can count." So it's got to be more than twice, then. And, you know, he points out, I did these things even though I knew they were wrong. And, let's see, yeah, so they, they burn the film and the paper with the signatures. And there at the very end, Doc shows up to, to listen to Darlene sing. And she sings over the end credits very, very nicely done. And let's see, so there's some, I, uh, let's see, I don't really have anything to add to what's on, I, yeah, I will just direct you to, in, in the, in the film's Wikipedia page, there's a there's a section called themes and analysis, and uh, hold on, I will just make absolutely certain real quick. So the yeah themes and analysis until we get to the section for production, and yeah. The, um, yeah, that entire chunk is well worth reading. I, I don't have anything to add to it, so... Yeah. Um, and... So I did see one person say... The... the yeah, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna quote this entire review. Bad ripoff of Quentin Tarantino films, not even close. It is an old Hollywood trick. They find out someone is making a period film about the Manson family and attempts to beat them to the gate and steal the thunder trash. And I am definitely not gonna claim that that never happens. There's definitely a number of cases where, yeah, one one studio puts out, you know. A specific film and another studio hears oh that's a th they're gonna make a movie about that that might do big numbers hurry get some you know put something in we got to put something in theaters before they do you know and it's obviously really like you you want that kind of thing to be motivated not by profit but by passion you know if, if someone at Studio A is trying to make a movie that someone working on is extremely passionate about, Studio B shouldn't be trying to, you know, to, um, knock something together just to, to, you know, make, yeah, to, to ruin it for them. I'm not 100% certain. I, I tried Googling. I couldn't find an answer because... Drew Goddard started writing the script, the script for this back in 2016. I'm not 100% certain if people knew that far back that Tarantino was working on a movie about Manson. I, I def, definitely, the, the you know, I, I knew that he was doing that before I saw like a trailer for, you know, that movie. But, yeah, um, obviously it's, it's, it's bad if that was something that happened here, but like Billy Lee is a important part of the movie, so I don't know. I and I, I Drew Goddard doesn't really strike me as the kind of person who would try to steal someone else's. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I hope it didn't happen. Obviously, if it did, I 100% agree that that was wrong. I don't agree with giving this movie a negative review over that, you know, it's, it, yeah, it, that really feels like you're just not giving it its, its due. Um, I like this better than, I keep dancing around, do I want to give away, 
I guess it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is the, the Tarantino film. And yeah, you know, I thought it was fine. It's probably, in my opinion, the, the least of the ones he's directed himself. Uh, I'm almost certain it's the least of the ones he's written. Yeah. Um, and, and like, can you really not see a difference between these two movies? Like, do you really, does it really feel like it's just, there's, there's nothing in this movie other than a studio trying to beat Quentin Tarantino to the punch for, for a period piece that deals with the Manson family. Like, it, the movies are incredibly different from each other. It just, yeah, I, I really hope, I, I, it frustrates me, this culture of, you know, saying, oh, this thing reminds me of this other thing. That means that this, you know, the thing that is reminding me of a thing is automatically bad. It's automatically a ripoff. Like, it's true that there is, there are a lot of, of ripoffs in, you know, yeah, when it comes to movies, TV shows, music, you know, but that doesn't mean that all of it is and yeah I would definitely say there there are huge differences between these two movies the yeah just like I mean in in I would definitely say a big thing in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is the sort of the changes of Hollywood the the death of old Hollywood and this movie is is much more about like this thing of, you know, right, yeah, right from wrong, crisis of faith. Yeah, just, I, I look forward to media literacy improving, but with the way the American education system is right now, I, I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon. Not as long as the, the fascists keep having so much power over it. Anyway, the yeah there actually there will not be another section of this i didn't realize anyway yes so that is it for this video let me know in the comments section what is your favorite neo noir you know any any movie that you feel is somewhat similar to to this one and uh, yeah you know who was your favorite character what was your favorite reveal or favorite like line of dialogue that means multiple things that kind of thing if you like this video please thumbs up subscribe hit that little bell there should be a link to my main channel page one two more links to stuff like relevant playlists a suggested video if you watch on the screen right about now i put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie i also do a weekly video talking about the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus MCU show, which these days is Loki. The next time something Star Wars hits Disney Plus, I will also cover that. I do a weekly video where I talk about the most recent episode of a horror show I watched, and currently I'm working my way through Blood Curse. I try to do a daily video, it doesn't always end up being every single day, of a Marvel TV show, uh, mostly the ones that tie into the MCU or more or less do, but I'm also doing the the other, you know, b basically anything recently animated that isn't like Lego, if it's Marvel, that came out wrong, very little of it animated. The only animated ones I'm doing are Hitmonkey and Modoc. But anything, if it's not animated and it is a recent show that is Marvel, you know, yeah, I'm probably going to cover it. Right now, I am doing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm early in Season 3. I will also be doing The Gifted and Legion, which are X-Men, not MCU. And recently, the Rune Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to... This one, in other words, if more of it is like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog, as what's me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording. I'll catch you next time. 
I think you should make peace with the fact that things have changed.